Uh, Moa is our uh, keynote speaker. Uh, she's going to talk about diversity and inclusion in AI and research and um, industry in general. So I'm going to uh, let her uh, talk. Um, Moa, would you are you able to share your screen or should I? Let's see. I'll try. Um, and then you want to have it in presentation mode, of course. Let's see if I manage. Okay. I'm working in Teams, so it's always this when you're switching to Zoom. <laughs> um, yes. Although Teams, I find more um, challenging for me. Yes. But now I hope you can see my yes. screen in presentation mode. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, well then, I will start. Thank you. So thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Moa Perstotter, and I work at Vinova, the Swedish innovation agency, as a program manager within gender equality and diversity for innovation. And I'm invited here today to talk to you uh, a bit about our approach when it comes to AI and how AI can be a tool to promote gender equality in uh, both representation wise, but also in solving different um, uh, gender equality issues that we have in our society with the use of technology. Um, we have 30 minutes uh, and I will make sure to have some time for questions because I really would like to hear your thoughts about our approach. But I'll just give you a brief introduction about Vinova, who we are, um, then about the sex and gender dimension in research innovation content. What does that actually mean and how does it affect technology? And then, of course, um, the main uh, Headline of this presentation, how AI can promote gender equality and our approach working with that at Vinova. And I want to finish off with some uh, updates from uh, uh, the European Union and what's being done in this field. And yeah, of course, then the Q&A session. Uh, okay, so uh, what is Vinova? Uh, as said, Vinova is, uh, is the Swedish innovation agency. It's a government agency under the Ministry of Enterprise and Innovation. And uh, our instructions state that Vinova's task is to promote sustainable growth by financing needs-based research and development of effective innovation system. And I think that needs-based research is very important, especially when it comes to our approach uh, of AI. Um, so we work with uh, stimulating collaborations between companies, universities, other higher education institutions, public services and civil society, because we know that we need innovation in broad, in broad sense. Innovation it is uh, not only technical things or things that you can drop on your foot. It's, uh, it's also about uh, new ways of collaborating, new ways of uh, uh, of working together, new ways of uh, questioning what is needs-based research and innovation. So we are really targeting innovation uh, on a systematic level uh, with a system approach. We are also Sweden's expert agency when it comes to transformative system innovation. Uh, and we are the national contact authority for the EU framework uh, and program for research and innovation. Um, so we, yeah, we help Swedish uh, applicants when it comes to question regarding EU funding as well. And we have a gender mainstreaming mission from the Swedish government that affects the whole agency. And it is uh, in two uh, different parts. One is about that we should integrate perspectives uh, regarding uh, uh, gender equality, diverse and inclusion when it comes to who we fund, who gets our money, uh, who is the project leader of the project we fund and what kind of, of field and branches get our uh, money since it's tax money. But we also work with ensuring that this kind of in, um, perspective is being integrated in the research content and in the innovation solutions when that is applicable. So every 
uh, applicant that apply for funding from Innova need to describe how they are working with gender equality uh, in terms of the project team, so in, in terms of representation. But they also need to uh, analyze in what kind of ways their research or their innovation take this kind of perspective into account um, when solving the problem or the issue that they are targeting. So why do we care about these things? Not only because it's a mission from the Swedish government, but because it makes business sense. As I said, we use tax money. We uh, have a significant role in doing this in a democratic way, but also to make sure that we benefit the whole society with our research and innovations. And we can see, we have research that shows us when we fund in diverse teams and in innovations that has been taking these perspectives into account, we see a higher level of innovation. We can see uh, growth. We get international recognition for our uh, innovations uh, using these approaches. And we secure competence and talents because we are making full use of the whole society's innovation potential. And we are also building a more sus social sustainable society that are more resilient towards the, the challenges that we all face together. So it, it just makes sense to do this. It's the right thing to do. And I'm very happy to be part of that team driving these perspectives uh, at our uh, agency. But we also have some Swedish gender equality goals that affect our agency and that affects the research and innovation that we need. Um, so all these are being prioritized by the Swedish government and Vinova tackle all of these challenges, but especially, especially the one regarding equal division of power and influence in society and economic gender equality, because we can see that uh, actors and uh, innovation, innovators and researchers, entrepreneurs that get funding from Innova uh, also have, um, uh, that has a positive change in their uh, career uh, and by so also in uh, regarding their uh, economy or their uh, chances of getting new funding, etc. But to have these goals or challenges in mind, uh, we can also see, oh, sorry, we can see that uh, when uh, we are financing innovations that do not take this challenges or this kind of perspectives into mind when building or developing new solutions, technologies and innovations, there is a risk for uh, increase in inequalities. Um, on, the, on the slide here, you can see uh, different kinds of innovations uh, that has been before uh, not taking this kind of perspective into minds. For example, in Sweden and likely elsewhere, uh, crash test dummies had always been male, despite the fact that this, uh, 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 despite the fact that it's not only uh, men who drive cars. So, um, Vinova funded a project that developed the first pregnant uh, crash test dummy to include the perspectives of gender equality and intersectionality when testing the safety of cars. And that's just one example of how uh, technology can prove, improve um, the benefits for, for a wider range of people in the society and how it's increasing innovation when you take uh, these perspectives into mind. And the, the other picture in the middle is showing uh, um, the face recognition technology. So we've had so many solutions that had not taking uh, uh, diverse data uh, into account when building face recognition apps, meaning that it could not be used for people with darker skin because the data that's been used was uh, of picture with of white men, uh, meaning that with technology, there's a risk of scaling inequalities uh, in society. 
But if you change the approach and ask, so in what way could technology be used to actually increase gender equality, inclusion, diversity, etc., in society? You can see that if you use norm creative innovation processes and intersectional design, innovation uh, can be promoted, uh, inclusion and relevance can be assured. And that's what we build our program, AI to promote gender equality uh, on. Because we know that we need to innovate the way we innovate. And until now, efforts done within the area of AI uh, primarily focused on gender-related biases in machine learning and algorithms, such as bias data sets, but also ethical issues regarding uh, objectives, implementation strategies, uh, impact on the job market, etc. But in this program, um, we want to change the perspective since it's is specifically important from a democratic and inclusive perspective to support and finance innovations within emerging technologies such as AI, where gender equality is at the core of the innovation process rather than an aspect to be deal dealt with in, in later stages. And we also know that there is a lack of women in the tech industry at large, ICT included. Uh, and with this approach, we think that we can actually increase the amount of women and underrepresented groups being interested in the technology and in the tech industry. So when we started this program, uh, we had some questions that we wanted to know more about. So we wanted to investigate how AI could contribute to the area of gender equality and inclusion. If there are barriers, then what are they? Which different actors should collaborate in this approach? What kind of experts do we need to bring together? And are there actually already existing examples of application using this approach? So we started this collaboration together with uh, some different kind of, of actors from both uh, uh, the European Union, uh, uh, the, the civil society within uh, Women in AI, for example, and um, the UN. And we have published two reports on this, one from Rambeul and one from Women in AI, uh, where we are explaining the answer on the different uh, questions. So I will not go so deeply into that, but uh, you can uh, find them on our website and I can put a link in the chat uh, if you want to dig, dig deeper in our findings. But just to give some examples of um, startups or applications that have this approach uh, that uh, is already existing. So we have in our portfolio, uh, Grace Health, that develops a chatbot aimed at women with the goal of assisting users to better understand their fertility, answering questions about contraception and other hygiene issues. So by analyzing the anonymized questions submitted, the chatbot improves its answers and thereby offering even better help to the users. Uh, we have Rikare 2 that develops an AI prototype to ensure gender equal learning algorithms in financers' decisions. So the aim of this project is to create an assessment algorithm for broader financing of an equal and competitive business sector. Using norm criticism, the project explores how innovation in AI can reduce unconscious bias for gender equality in access to finance. We have um, Seretai um, that aims at using AI tools to automate the collection of diversity data on international cinema movies. So together with their partners from the film industry and representatives of women in film and television, Saritai investigates how this type of data can be put to commercial use. Uh, and last but not least, we have an AI platform, an AI learning platform, uh, because in Sweden we had a, equal, a gender equal education goal of educating at least 1% of Sweden's population in AI. So this platform is focusing on, uh, uh, on the horse industry and the horse sector, where we know that we have a lot of active young girls and women in Sweden. So by using this interest, um, we take technology 
to a field where women are already being active instead of always talking about we need more women in STEM, we need more women being interested in technology. We look where are they already active and show them how they, with their passion, in this case for for the horse industry, can use um, technology to uh, even get more out of that industry and that uh, interest. So yeah, this is some uh, examples of projects that we have in our portfolio and that we've been financing. But we we thought that we could spread this information in a wider way uh, and spread it on a global uh, a global um, uh, arena. So we also funded a hackathon. So we used the Swedish uh, gender equality goals that I showed you before, or the uh, the challenges as something for hackers to, to hack and to see if we could find commercial solutions of these different gender equality uh, goals or gender equality issues. So we've been doing this in three, uh, in, 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 we've been on the, doing this three times with different collaborators from across the world. Uh, we just finished our third one together with Women in AI USA and the overall uh, theme of that hackathon was uh, global responsible AI. And during a couple of weeks, the hackers get, uh, oh, my presentation disappeared. Sorry. Um, now I can see it again. Let's see. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah. So during a couple of weeks, hackers, uh, with or without any uh, uh, expertise in AI, uh, is being brought together with mentors, experts uh, from the field to try to use AI to solve uh, gender equality issues. And we've been able we've been able to show that even with a hackathon, just for a couple of weeks, there is a possibility to create commercial solutions with this approach. So this example here is um, from our first hackathon. It's called PAGE. So that was a couple of researcher that put together uh, an AI, uh, an algorithm to search for content of gender bias in children's book uh, to be able to provide parents with information about what kind of books to buy for their uh, children if they want to make sure that they read uh, books that uh, are not uh, written with gender bias. Um, and this uh, other solution was from uh, uh, also from the hackathon called FAIR that tackled the challenge of uh, uh, gender equal uh, economy uh, when it comes to heterosexual uh, couples and how they save uh, for uh, the retirement, because there is a problem with uh, with uh, uh, women staying uh, at home with the kids for a longer time of period, which influence their re retirement savings. So this product or this application used AI to help couple to uh, yeah make savings more, more gender equal throughout uh, the life. So uh, to wrap up, it is uh, indeed possible to find commercial solutions with the approach of how AI can promote gender equality. Uh, but we have a lot of things to still get our, uh, to straight out. Um, so we still need to do, to do a lot of impact analysis, like what kind of solutions that we have in our portfolio that we have seen examples of, uh, will in the long run have the greatest societal effects what is technical feasibility? Uh, what has put, uh, commercial potential? Uh, what is the need? Uh, as I said, we do finance need-based research and innovations. Uh, so what is actually the need uh, out there when it comes to gender equality? And who are the problem owners? Um, where in the development process of different AI tools should we integrates uh, and include social scientists and experts because now we know that the the teams that develop AI tools in general are in general uh, very uh, or are, are not quite 
diverse even when it comes to competence. But where in the, the specific process do we need to include other kinds of um, of knowledge than just the technical background, such as behavioral science, psychologists, uh, gender experts, etc., to make sure that we do not, uh, uh, yeah, integrate gender biases, etc., in the solutions that we fund. And how is this approach towards AI and gender equality making us as a society more resilient? How can we make sure that we're not just sitting here and say that, oh, uh, the development of technology, it goes so fast and it's so much risks, but instead actually putting ourselves in the forefront, in the, in the, in the driving seat and uh, demanding what, a what AI and technology should be used for. Um, and we are out there talking with startups and investors uh, about the importance uh, of using these kind of perspective when building a startup, when building uh, technical solutions, everything from building uh, it with a diverse team, but also make sure to have diverse advisory boards and mentors around the team, but also always critique your own service, products, and infrastructure uh, in terms of intersectionality, uh, data sets, who are you targeting, how are you um, communicating, what is the actual need, what is the actual problem uh, of your solution. Uh, because if we are doing this right, there is uh, a great potential in, in using technology and using entrepreneurship of solving some of our uh, societal challenges such as gender equality. And yes, there are also a lot of new actions and policies from the European Union uh, focusing on this. So, for example, uh, EU's biggest innovation funding program, Horizon Europe, is taking new actions when it comes to gender equality and intersectionality. So, if you as uh, if you're an actor such as Vinova, getting uh, uh, funding from EU that we should give. Uh, uh, give to applicants, we need to have an officially published gender equality plan. Uh, and that is an, uh, a, a requirement. Also, uh, as I said before, integrating uh, gender dimensions in research innovation content is now assessed under the excellence criterion, meaning that applicants that do this uh, is seen more excellent than others. Uh, so that is really putting a pressure on the on the importance of these perspectives and how it also uh, raises the innovation level and making uh, it more relevant for a broader part of our society. But also gender distribution in project teams is being a ranking criterion, meaning if there are two applicants getting the same score in a Horizon Europe uh, call, the one with the most uh, gender equal team will get the funding. So it's also uh, something that can assure you uh, 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 some benefits when applying for funding. But there are also coming new directives when it comes to um, uh, the demand of startups and companies reporting on, on uh, sustainability, where social uh, sustainability indexes uh, are also being included. There's a lot of pilots going on uh, within the uh, European Innovation Council where they want to put women at the forefront of deep tech uh, because there is a lack of talent and there is a need of making um, the, the tech industry more gender equal. And there are also a lot of EU funded projects that are putting a focus on this, such as this one, Femin ICT and also another EU project that I'm part of that is called Gender Action Plus, working with making the European research era more gender equal and inclusive. So there are actions and there are policies from the EU pushing towards these new approaches and working for making uh, the industry more gender equal and putting women at the forefront of uh, uh, technology. But yes, to make this happen, uh, global cooperation is crucial. And that is uh, why I'm 
happy to see that this project is is uh, is a global cooperation between different European countries, um, and I'm I'm happy to see how we can scale these initiatives even further. So with that being said, uh, it's time for me to wrap up, uh, but I just want to leave you with this quote uh, that we do need uh, the entire population's experience, skills and knowledge uh, to make full use of society's innovation potential and uh, asking us how AI can be used to do good and not just talking about the risk. That's one way to, to make full use of society's innovation potential. Thank you. That was all for me. Thank you very much, Moa. That was a very, very interesting presentation. Um, 